Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to the Savage Performance Garage. And today I wanted to go over a, uh, we got kind of a special car in here today, man. This is a, uh, a 2003 Cobra Terminator. What's good about this one is it's all original and it has under 10,000 miles on it. Camera's a little crooked here. Um, yeah, so as you all know, we're, well, you may not know, we're actually in Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, Florence, Kentucky area, just outside of, uh, just south of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so this, the guy that owns this car, he bought it from Florida. I'm not sure what city in Florida, but, uh, an older couple owned it. It was just their weekend car. As you can see, it's a convertible. Um, but this thing's pretty much fully loaded for a Cobra convertible. And um, the story is that they actually owned, I think he said it was a 1970 Mach 1. Super nice Mach 1, all restored and the whole deal. And they enjoyed driving that one more than this one. This thing just sat. Like they bought it brand new in 2003 or 2004. It is an 03 but it has under 10,000 original miles. It's like just a little bit under 10,000 original miles. And this guy has been driving it a little bit since he's owned it. So it had, I don't know how much it had on it when he bought it. It must've been like really low, but man, this thing, you know, we work on Cobras and from time to time, we actually have one in the back now, we're waiting on the parts. And you know, we see these cars come in with all these modifications done to them and somebody, down the road spends the money on it does it correctly and you know does a really good job and then they just get tired of it or whatever and they sell it and generally whoever buys it after that just turns it into a piece of shit i mean i hate to say it but not always of course you know there's a lot of guys that buy them and they 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 continue on with the bill or whatever they do and they make it they keep it a nice ride man more often than more often than not we see these cars come in and we know somebody spent a ton of money on them because it has good parts you know and it's been done right but then the other stuff that we see that's just just totally it's just awful like so when we see something like this it's an honor to work on something like this i gotta tell you um i know it's original it hasn't been touched at all but man, that's, that's just awesome. I got in this thing and started it up and pulled it in the shop and it was like, wow, man, this thing's brand new. I mean, it is, it's, it's like a brand new car from 2003. So um, the only thing that's been done to it is it's got the JLT oil catch cans on either side of the motor. Okay, and it has a JLT cold air intake and that's it I mean it has a cat back but it has stock exhaust on it and underneath the car looks brand new it is no surface rust on the exhaust I mean nothing the only thing he, he did also he he still got stock pulley and everything but he he took the cover off because you know they we call them the cage they just look kind of goofy um, so he took that off so the reason it's in here is we're doing he bought everything from maximum motorsports he's got their their cam, caster camber plates um he's got uh lowering springs um we're doing so here's some of the we've already taken the, the front apart and um hr lowering springs caster camber plates you know pretty much Everything is good quality parts. Um, this is what you want to see. He's got, we're doing, we're going to drop the, the rear engine, or I'm sorry, we're going to drop the rear uh, diff, the whole diff cradles coming out of it and putting all new bushings in. Not that it needs it because it's brand new, but you know, these things are notorious, notorious for wheel hop. You know, they're independent rear suspension. So this basically is going to eliminate all of that. We're putting the, um, the body bushings in. We're putting the upper and lower control arm bushings in. 
the diff bushings. Um, we're gonna do a a Ford Performance rear end diff cover. Um, he's also going with um, half shafts. You know, we're, which you know he's not he's he's not really planning on racing this thing. I mean, he might take it to the track from time to time, um, but. You know, I, I really don't know why he's putting axles in it. I guess he just figured since we've got the diff dropped, um, might as well go ahead and put axles in it. So, but he, you know, that's all cool. Um, I can't remember which brand they are. Kind of opened everything up here. I don't know which one they are. We had them in, they were in another box. Oh, is it? G Force. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's G Force. Um, G Force half shafts. They're probably the 800 horsepower ones. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, he's not planning on really modifying the motor. Um, I mean, he might, but you know, even I'm not a fan of convertibles. But this is a good color combination right here. Silver, black top. I mean, look at this top. This thing is, stays in the garage. It's got a little dust on it, but this top is brand new. It's got the tinted back with the uh, defroster. You know, the interior. It smells brand new in here. This thing is really nice, man. I mean, you know, honestly, if I was to buy one, I, I don't personally, in, I don't enjoy working on these cars. I just don't like working on them. Um, they're not so bad working on the car itself and the suspension, it's just the engine, there's no room in here for, to work on these. These things are so tight and you know they can be knuckle busters man so you know if i was to purchase one like this i personally wouldn't do nothing to it i would leave it bone stock and i probably wouldn't drive it because you know these things are worth some money and they're really only going to go up in money especially if you have a car like this that is completely stock maybe with a cat back for a little sound um you know doing all the suspension stuff on it obviously probably not going to hurt the value of it but you know down the road if he decided to sell it to somebody and it was completely original there's no telling what he could get out of it especially if the thing only has fifteen thousand miles on it let's say down the road so but anyway, just wanted to kind of show you all what we got going on there. And I'm sure you guys have seen behind me what we got going on here. This is a 1949 Ford pickup truck. Customers had it for like 30 years. Not sure exact. It's had it for a long time. It does have a small block Chevy in it, 350. Turbo 350 transmission. It's been sitting for a long time been sitting in the field and he wants to get this thing going again he know he doesn't really care too much what it looks like right now but he wants all the suspension done he wants the brakes done he wants uh he just wants to be able to drive it like a normal truck would drive um the motor we did do a compression check on the motor and it's got some it's got one dead cylinder and it's got three other cylinders that have very low compression and then the other ones are not bad but so we're pulling the motor out we're going to rebuild it um we're going to throw some aluminum heads on it roller rockers a nice roller cam not doing no flat tap it we don't do flat tap it's no more Nothing but problems with flat tappet cams, man, uh, nowadays. Um, of course, you do have to break them in, you know, properly. you got to use a break-in oil with high zinc. you got to continue using motor oil after you break it in. Your oil changes. You want to use something like this in any flat tappet cam. You don't want to put any off-the-shelf oil, even with the additive. 
the detergents will clean off the additive and you know, eventually wipe the lobes out on these cams. Nowadays, these flat tappet cams, I hate to get off the subject of, the, of that one there, but anyway, flat tappet cams, man, the metals today are awful. They just, they just don't hold up. And you got a 50-50 chance on breaking the cam in without wiping lobes out anymore. So we don't do any flat tappets. We, you, you can't hardly find an engine builder to do flat tappets anymore because of that. Just the materials, man. Parts nowadays are just, even quality parts, they're just, uh, they're not like what they used to be. Um, so we're doing a roller cam, good set of heads. Um, he doesn't want to run 93 octane. He's an older guy, like he's older than me, you know. I'm old as dirt. Um, and he wants to run 89, 91 octane. I told him 89, 91 will, will keep you around nine to one compression. Um, you know, nine and a half to one, probably. Yeah, if we bumped the compression on up to 10, 10 and a half to one or 11, yeah, we could keep the total timing back, but what's the difference? So anyway, we're gonna build him a, a good running motor. We're gonna do the brakes, the brake lines, fuel line, probably have to do something with the tank, get the lights wired up. We gotta do some gauges, um, get the seat recovered. Gotta get some cooler windows. He, it does have roll up windows, but it doesn't have quarter windows. We gotta get them those. Um, so yeah, it's almost, it really needs to be totally restored, you know, but other, other, other than the way it looks, it's, uh, it's gonna be all mechanical on our end. So we'll have some more videos on this. Um, I just wanted to kind of basically show you guys about the Cobra there. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've got a lot of stuff going on, man. We're booked out to like April. And we still get more calls and people wanting to bring stuff. And, you know, I just tell them we can't get to it. I mean, I've already done three. I've already brought three vehicles in that needed a half a day to a day and a half or so worth of work. And we've actually squeezed them in. Well, like this one, well, he was actually scheduled over a month ago, so I really didn't have time to bring this one in, but, you know, I had him scheduled and I had to do it, so. But anyway, that's enough for this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you know, and hey, if you, uh, you know, what you like, um, leave some comments. I'll try to, you know, reply to them. It's, it's kind of hard with everything we got going on, um, but, you know, Hey, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. And please subscribe to the channel. We're obviously trying to grow the channel. So uh, I do appreciate you guys checking in on us. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video.